for a long time and I will introduce you the Kyanix RF technology and uh, the companies that are developing uh, Kyanix RF devices and have products right now on the market. So this is the overview on uh, the pre first presentation uh, about the advantages, the technology, um, what you have to know about the planning and uh, about the top topo topology and uh, the ETS commissioning that is not so much difficult. So I have to put this away. Okay, so let's start. Uh, one of the adv advantages is that uh, you can uh, use the Kinex F devices as you have uh, used it, uh, the TP devices uh, for now also in your product. Uh, there are many kind of possible solutions. It's a very easy and seamless integration. You can use the Kinex RF devices in your ETS5 and the demo in uh, the professional in the lights and also in the ETS inside. You can find the devices in the product catalog. Uh, on, uh, compared to other systems, you don't have any media break anymore. That means uh, that the media coupler uh, is directly connected to the Kyanix devices. And uh, you can go with the ETS directly to the Kyanix F to program, uh, to parameter and uh, to have diagnostic. And you don't have to have any uh, uh, couplers uh, where you only have to program it from one side. You can use it in residential and commercial buildings. Um, there are a lot of decentral functionalities and it is an international worldwide standard. There are many different kinds of uh, names and uh, marketing names on the market. Um, we are talking about the KNX RF1 point R, S mode. S mode means uh, all devices are integrated in the ETS. Uh, what you have to think about, um, the Kyanix devices um, just send uh, when there is a uh, button pressed or there are some informations that are important for the bus system, then they are sending uh, that is compared to other um, RF devices or systems, maybe your mobile phone in your pocket, it is sending all the time and it's connected to the uh, RF cell. Um, um, when you have Kynix Airf devices, this is important that uh, the um, devices are inside the circle where it is transmitted. And the other thing is before the telegram is sent, um, the RF uh, is looking outside uh, if the, there is some traffic on the um, system in the air, so, so to say. And uh, uh, the telegram is only sent for one time. In Carnix RF, we are using the frequency shift keying. And that means you have an, a carrier signal and on the carrier signal, there is a modulated signal and this is information. So we come to the damping. The damping means that the signal is uh, getting lower in, if it's uh, crossing any walls. So uh, as you know from other systems, uh, when you have some metal, the metal is the worst thing. So it's not possible to send any uh, telegrams or you get no uh, um, radiation through any metal or shields or, or leaded glass, for example. When you think about the planning, you have to have the senders, for example, in the middle of the building. So it's possible to have a tool that we see later on where you uh, have an app for the ETS where you can check um, uh, how good is the transmission to the uh, explicit devices. And another thing is when you are sending uh, through many walls, the damping is very high and the radiation is not going through more than two or three walls. 
but it's possible to have um, some kind of repeaters and the repeaters are connected. I will show you later on. So general rules for the planning. Um, avoid reflections. Uh, it will extinct the radio signal. Um, you have to uh, uh, think about the construction circumstances. For example, if you have uh, floor heating systems, um, floor heating systems or uh, a lot of steel in the concrete in, in the ceiling or in the floor, um, do not <laughs> install, that this might be very clear, do not install uh, Kynix devices direct on metal plates or something like that. Um, the antenna must be uh, really free um, when you when you install them. Don't uh, fold the antenna if there is an antenna on the device. And also keep distance to um, things that could interfere like uh, engines or uh, transformers or <laughs> micro microwave. So this is what I'm talking before. When you have an, an underfloor heating, for example, uh, it's usually not possible to get the radio signal from one floor to the other floor. So um, it is possible to have a media coupler or a repeater when you have in one floor many devices or you have a big distance, so you use in one floor a uh, repeater, and through the floors, uh, through the concrete, uh, you need to have, uh, for example, an, another uh, media coupler, and the media couplers are connected by the bus wire, you know, the TP wire, and uh, you need to have a power supply. Um, you can uh, usually uh, program it also, I will show you later on. Uh, through uh, KNX RF with the USB stick, or you can program it from the USB, from the TP side uh, with a uh, USB TP uh, interface. Um, when you uh, think about, when you have more, for example, um, one family living in the first floor, the next family is living in the second floor, then uh, it should not be possible um, that uh, one device is disturbing the other device, or when you're switching the light in the living room, that uh, uh, from Miss Müller, then you're uh, not sending telegrams to the other floor. So for this, in the ETS, there is a so-called domain address. Uh, this domain address can be um, automatically generated by the ETS. Uh, you see in the point four, maybe zero zero FA, and so on. And uh, you can also um, think about your own um, description about this domain address. So you can give, for example, zero zero one one or what you like. So these uh, um, devices will be programmed with the domain address, and so uh, one um, family <laughs> cannot um, no no one. Uh, from one floor to the other floor, you cannot uh, disturb the other one. So they are physically uh, um, not, not, not possible to, to uh, send any telegrams from one floor to the other floor. So one thing we have uh, in the training also is uh, that we have an uh, an ETS, and uh, then we have the USB stick, and we program from the USB stick directly to the KNX RF devices. And uh, you can use the ETS 5 Professional, you can use the ETS Inside, yeah, but you can also uh, test it with the light or with the ETS demo. Um, you can, uh, um, in one line, there are 200, uh, 265 devices, included the media coupler. And uh, when you have to have an additional line, you need another one of the media coupler and then it goes on with the next 265. So you don't usually don't need a TP line or something like that or a media coupler. You can build your own project only with a USB interface for your PC and uh, with the devices that you usually have for your Kynix RFD. So the commissioning is like this. For example, on the right side you have an um, example for 
um, shutter controls or uh, uh, windows. There is from Elsner, there's a remote control and an actuator that is working with RF. You just have only one side the power. On the other side, you have a connection to a shutter control. And uh, on the downside, you have the USB stick and on your connected to your PC. And then you program your uh, devices and then you go away with your laptop and with the USB and the program is finished. Other possibilities on the left side, you see what I'm talking about before. You connect your ETS with the USB stick from RF and then you can program your Kinex RF devices, but also you can program the TP devices and you also can uh, connect your TP line with the IP router to another IP line. And it's also possible to program from the ETS side to, uh, to the IP side. Uh, next possibility in the middle is you can use an uh, TP USB interface and then you can program not only the TP devices that you have in your uh, uh, bus connected, you can also program the Kinex RF devices with a media coupler or also on IP. And on the right hand side, you can program over IP connected with an IP router to the TP line and the TP line is connected to RF. And also you can see that you can have a remote uh, commissioning. You can sit in your office and connect to um, the project of your customer. And then you can not only program the TP, you can also program the RF. So let's have a look into the ETS. The Kinex RF devices are all in the ETS also. Uh, you can, the, the handling of the Kinex RF is the same like uh, you know about the TP devices that you use usually. Uh, you check the catalog, then you uh, point it over to your project. And uh, the next step is uh, that you uh, take it to your to your room or the structure, the bus structure, the building structure. Um, and uh, the next step is the same, like you use it usually with your TP devices. You do the parameters as usual, and you connect the uh, 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 group addresses. Same like your TP device, it, it looks all the same. And then you connect your uh, laptop with the USB interface and then you can program over the air, so to say, uh, over the radio, <laughs> um, your, your KNX RF devices. So I can show you. <sighs> that it works. Oh. Uh -huh. Takes longer. So you see a little bit example this is our um, KNX education set. And you see the difference here. You see the uh, symbol for the RF. It is a little bit uh, like a, a radio. And these are the twisted pair. The, the box is just white. And then you choose the device. Go to download application and before you have to check if the top, uh, interface is connected and then you download the application. So sad, you, I have no webcam. <laughs> But you have to believe me. <laughs> so
So let's go to the second part. We, um, this is presentation is uh, for the overview about the manufacturers and the products that are possible now on the market. Uh, so the first uh, manufacturer is Apricom. I'm going alphabetical order. Um, we have an, uh, an Apricom has an interface for Kinex RF and has a media coupler. Then the company Elsner uh, has a remote control. They have uh, specialized, uh, usually specialized on. Uh, um, drives for shutter control, for shading, for windows. And so they have a concept, made a concept for uh, very easy connecting the engine, the motor to 230 volts. And it's an, a standardized connector that is usually uh, used for the shading. So the one device is connected directly to the engine, then one device, uh, that one that MSG2 can connect two motors uh, simultaneously, and uh, MSG DST uh, can transmit the 230 volts to uh, the next window. They also have a USB stick and they have a media coupler. Then the company Tira, they have a push button program for uh, different uh, applications. They also have some kind of media coupler and this media coupler can also be a repeater. They have a USB stick for programming and they have a remote control in uh, four buttons and uh, eight buttons. So the company Jung has uh, on wall mounted push button program and they have also a flush mounted push button program and they have the same media coupler uh, in the same group. The company MDT has a bigger range. They have also a media coupler and uh, they have a push button program in glass, in white and in black for four fold and eight fold. And they have different kind of uh, flush mounted push buttons that have also an actuator integrated. And uh, they have um, also a push button interface where you can connect, for example, uh, motion detectors and you can give the information on radio frequency. And they have a related actor and a shutter control actor and uh, specialized, there is a socket adapter that is integrated uh, to, to metering the power and this information can all be given so now directly to KNX um, to your system. The company Tapco has developed an application that can be integrated on the ETS. You can find it on the KNX shop. And you see the fields are red, green, yellow, orange. And it's checking the strengths um, of the radio signal. So uh, you can check in the project directly when you connect to the USB or you connect to the medium coupler, um, how good the um, telegrams can be received by the different devices. The company Weinzel has developed also a push button um, in, insert inlet that is uh, fitting to the Ocean program. Um, the USB stick, can, you can also program with the USB stick from uh, Weinzel and you have a um, different kind of media coupler that is now also integrated in the secure. The company ZF um, has also an, an energy uh, saving uh, um, push button module. It's inserted into also in the in ocean uh, uh, housings and you can connect now directly um, with a KNX uh, RF devices directly to the push button and you don't need any batteries. But my colleague will show you to this also in the second part. Um, the KNX Association has designed a an, uh, flyer for KNX uh, RF with all the advantages and an overview about the products. Thank you very much. So I will handle over or Jesus will handle over to my friend. Yeah.
Thank you, Ida, uh, for the comprehensive uh, explanation about the Kenex RF from the system integration point of view. Uh, just one highlight that uh, a brochure flyer with the Kenex RF was made at, uh, last year for light and building. And fortunately, there are more Kenex RF products since then. So we, we will update it soon with, the, with new products. Now I'm gonna hand over the presentation to uh, Marcus. So get ready, please. Thank you, Peter. Thanks a lot. Okay, Marcus, we can see your screen and your mouse moving okay. around. So please go ahead. Okay, thank you very much, Peter, for all your information and the introduction of uh, KNIX RF. So, we at ZF uh, will now show you and present you uh, the advantage of a battery free solution, which we have developed already uh, some time ago and which we have already shown at uh, Lighted Building Fair. So it's a very clever concept and uh, my colleague Jana, who is the, our product uh, marketing manager, will give you some further details showing all the advantages of our uh, development and uh, will also give you this introduction how easy uh, the integration of uh, the uh, ZF module can be made in the ETS5. So I will hand over to Jana. Yes, hello everyone. Also from my side. Um, so my name is Jana Pilhofer. Um, together with Markus Bachmeier, I'm taking care of uh, the energy harvesting solutions here at ZF. Um, yeah, we welcome you also and thank you for your interest in our presentation. And um, yeah, after our presentation, please feel free to ask uh, your questions. And um, also thank you from my side to Peter for the introduction of KNXRF. So um, we would like to show you as a start our contribution to KNXRF. So um, ZF is a manufacturer of energy harvesting solutions. Um, our engineers have developed an inductive generator that creates about 330 microjoules just by one push. And um, our energy harvesting product range um, now also includes um, for several years now, I think we have introduced it at uh, Light and Building 2014 already, um, a KNX RF. Um, self-powered wireless push button module so for direct communication in um, with KNX RF without gateway so um, this is a push button module for example um, for to switching lights or on and off or to control blind uh, blinds the the module is based on our generators on our energy harvesting generator so this means um, it is completely maintenance free um, no batteries need to be replaced. You have um, don't have to lay additional wiring, and yeah, this makes it uh, very easy to install even in uh, inaccessible places or on uh, glass walls, for example. The the module is completely uh, configurable via the ETS5 software. I will show you that later on, and um, it is enabled for direct communication with um, other KNX RF devices, uh, bearing in mind. Um, that um, we also use this um, KNX RF 1.0 RS mode protocol. So what you can see uh, on this slide, the, the black one is our push button module. It is compatible with standard frames and panels for energy harvesting switch modules, but it can also be combined with um, customer specific designs on request. Yeah, as mentioned, it uses uh, the KNX RF 1.0 RS mode protocol. And just some technical um, details from our side. The module has in buildings an RF distance um, of up to 30 meters. 
this depends, of course, on the surroundings, so on the type and uh, consist uh, consistency of the construction material, as Peter has um, explained in his presentation. Um, yeah, the, the damping is um, has a huge impact. So metal, of course. Um, yeah, the module is also developed for minimum 100,000 switching cycles um, in buildings that is uh, typically um, sufficient and also for a temperature range from minus 20 to plus 45 degrees. Together with the module, we have developed a um, programming adapter because the module itself is battery free, but for um, the configuration process, we always need um, a bi-directional communication with ETS, and therefore we need this um, programming adapter. So um, yeah, it is. It provides the necessary power for the programming mode um, during setup only, or if you want to make changes afterwards within the application. Um, it has um, two two, two um, AAA batteries and um, enclosed, and um, if if you're plugging the the programming adapter on the module, which you can see on the on the right picture of this slide. Um, it directly activates the push buttons pairing mode. On the next slides, we just want to show you the, the integration of our product into the, ETS, into the ETS and the different functions you have. So um, yeah, you can either use uh, the module as a two channel module or um, also five or six channel channels are possible. So first of all, um, of course, you need to select the product in the ETS catalog. You can find it under ZF generic push button. Um, you select it and then you decide whether you want to have a two channel switch or four or six um, channel switch. If you want to have this um, two channel switch, you um, can decide um, if you want a a switch or so a light switch if you want to control lights on or off if you want to have um, shutters to be um, yeah controlled up and down and um, yeah this is this is the general function as a two two channel switch you can also see um, here on the next slide that you can decide um, for for each rocker, which uh, functionality it uh, should have. So if the left, if the upper rocker should have um, the um, light on or off, and also for the um, rocker below to um, define the concrete functionality. So, but the general function of um, these. Um, this push button module is as a four or six fold um, switch. So um, in general, um, we have of course uh, four push points, but you can have um, six functions as well if you um, press two buttons um, at the same time for the for the function five and six, let's say. So um, here you can see the the definition. Um, itself so you have to define for the left rocker would you like to use it for uh, switching or as a shutter or for dimming you can define the same for the right rocker and then the the functionality five and six for um, left and right rocker when they are pushed together at the same time and also here um, you can for each rocker then define the concrete action. So um, for the switch function, for example, should it uh, be a switch on press, uh, so simply on and off, or would you like to toggle on press? And uh, also for dimming, for example, um, should the, the upper rocker um, make uh, the light brighter or darker, and also um, the the other rocker uh, should it which functionality it should have in the end. So um, yeah, this is what what you can do in um, in the ETS with our product. So you define your parameters, 
and when configured in the ETS, um, the parameters can afterwards uh, be loaded wirelessly onto the push button module. And uh, once the data is transferred, so uh, when all parameters are loaded, loaded onto the push button module, um, the modules are entirely self-sufficient. So you then have no further maintenance work. You don't have to replace any batteries or so. So you don't need to lay any wiring around. Yeah, that's already um, what we wanted to show you from our side. Um, I hope we gave you an uh, impression of what is possible with our product. Um, if you have uh, any questions, um, I think uh, Jesus will give us the opportunity to discuss afterwards. Um, you can also visit our website where you can find out more on our cane existence. And yeah, please feel to feel free to contact us also directly um, if you have any further question. So thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Marcus and Jana, for also your input in this important topic. Uh, if there are, we have questions, now is the opportunity for the audience. Any question about KNX RF, I think this is the best opportunity today to clarify. Feel free to request the, the microphone, so I can open the microphone, or you can just drop the question on the chat box. If uh, or while you think your questions, uh, we have a short uh, presentation from uh, Peter about uh, education sets for the KNX RF. OK, uh, but before, we have already some questions. Um, Francois, I think is the right pronunciation. Uh, Mayer says, are all standards compatible together? Well, I, is there anyone who wants to reply? Uh, I could do it as well, but I think we have our guest speakers today. So for instance, Marcus uh, or uh, Jana, anyone, you have the microphones open now. Marcus and Peter, uh, could you please reply to this question? Okay, so maybe I'm going to try all standards. No, not all standards. It's the Kinex RF standard, and in this point, it is the Kinex uh, uh, um, RF standards, one RF. So that I showed you before in my presentation, there are many different uh, um, kind of um, RFs that are used in technologies, and also maybe Hagar has an uh, own standard, and IBB has an own standard, they're working on RF. But um, if you have to, you, if you need the, uh, the compatibility to the ETS, they are only, it's only possible with the uh, KNX RF1 RS mode. So all yeah. products, uh, qualified and specified for this Kinex RF mode, these are compatible together and can be normally programmed by the ETS. Yes. Correct. Okay, thank you. Just to maybe some clarification, there was in the past other KNX RF, uh, but which was not uh, fully compatible from the within the ETS, uh, maybe that could bring some confusion, uh, but the since the Canex RF specifications were uh, redefined and the, uh, now we have the Canex RF system mode uh, products that are fully compatible among them and that they can be programmed via the ETS. Yes. Okay, any, any other question? Okay, in the meantime, I'll make Peter again presenter so he can show us that nice initiative about uh, the presentation or the education kits. Okay, thank you. So, I need some. It's on the way. So, um, we started last year to create a so-called um, education sets for KNX RF S-Mode. 
to uh, show um, customers and people how easy it is to uh, program and uh, to work with the Kinex RF. So I want to introduce the set to you. Um, yeah, about the advantages for the um, training centers. It's uh, concepted for the training centers. We have a lot of training centers in Europe. And then uh, next year, there is uh, part of the education for a basic course, also the uh, Kinex RF. So the training center can use this complete set if they like. So um, we have a standardized uh, Kinex training in Europe. Um, it is included in the basic course. You can also do um, standalone workshops, if you like, for your customers. Um, it's a consistent uh, presentation. We have made uh, PowerPoints for the training also. And uh, you have the documents. Uh, we, we designed uh, documents for the training. Um, you can do the practical commissioning in different kinds. And uh, there are um, to show that it is possible to connect uh, uh, the different uh, devices from different companies. We use them also. So you will see what kind. So you can show um, not only Kynix RF with this set in the middle on the left side. You can also uh, uh, have a look on uh, Twisted Pair. You can have also the IP integration. And you can uh, uh, show the customers and your students how easy it is to program with the ETS over IP, or over TP, and over RF. Uh, what software you can use? You can use the ETS Professional. It's also possible with the ETS Lite. And it's also possible, and it's very interesting with the ETS Demo, because it's uh, possible to have one project with five devices. And it is uh, only five devices on this, not only, but it's five devices on the wall. You can use it with, uh, for workshops. You can use it also for ETS inside workshops because the product databases are inside the database of the ETS inside. And you can have KNX RF workshops also. What products are included? Uh, in the set you see on the left side, there is uh, devices from Elsner, there are devices from MDT, and there are devices from ZF. And we have also devices from uh, Applecom. Uh, with we call it a central unit, but it is not a central unit because you you can have it in uh, additional. Uh, there is a media coupler and uh, there is uh, a power supply and a little visualization. The visualization is could be integrated into the ETS five, so you can all have it together in the ETS five. That is one of the main advantages. But you can use any uh, uh, visualization also because there is a Kinex IP router inside and you can connect to any visualization that you want to use. Um, we recommend the equipment for the workshops and the, for the courses, maybe six uh, uh, laptops, then six education sets, and one of the central. We call it central, but it isn't really a central. Um, we call one of the central because um, the fastest one can then program the central unit and so on. And you can see on this iPhone the visualization, and you can also try to go over Wi Fi with the ETS and program the twisted pair devices. This is what it looks like. We had an, a workshop in Nuremberg in October last year, and in the end of October, we had a workshop in Switzerland. And you see some of the participants and how the education set is used. Um, we produced this uh, education set in Switzerland for TAPCO and uh, the complete set all with all devices you see in the screen without the ETS on the left side. Um, well, we are providing for uh, 1,365 euros. And if you like to have the, the uh, central set also, with the devices you see on the screen, it is about 1,195 euro, excluding FAT and delivery. <laughs> so if you like, you can start now with the education, and you can start with your workshops with these education sets. Thank you very much. OK, thank you very much, Peter.
Um, I think we can conclude this webinar here. If uh, questions, you can contact the presenters. Uh, an email will be sent with the uh, with the presentation slides, so you can find the contact details over there. And you can also contact Kenex Association for sure if you have any questions about the Kenex RF specifications. Other than that, thank everyone for being here with us on Friday. I hope you have a good weekend and uh, that you uh, participate at the last webinar uh, with uh, Hega about Kenex RF Multi, which is also a very interesting variation of the specifications uh, to enhance the KNX RF. Thank you very much and have a good day. Thank you very much. Thank you also.